Chemical properties tell how a substance reacts with other substances. Physical properties can be observed without chemically changing the substance. In order to observe a chemical property of a substance, that substance has to react with something else, after which it's not the same substance we were talking about at the beginning. Physical properties, we don't have to do a chemical reaction. Once we've observed a physical property, we still have the same substance that we started out with. We can also classify properties as extensive or intensive. Extensive properties depend on the amount of substance present, whereas intensive properties do not. Intensive properties depend on the composition of the substance, not how much of it we have. All properties can be classified as either being chemical or physical. Furthermore, all properties can be classified as being extensive or intensive. So let's try a couple of examples. Electrical conductivity is a physical property and an intensive property. We can observe electrical conductivity without doing a chemical reaction on the substance. For example, in the upper left, this coil of copper wire conducts electricity. We can observe it conduct electricity, and after that, we still have copper. And electrical conductivity is an intensive property, which means a small amount of copper will conduct, a large amount of copper will conduct. The fact of electrical conductivity does not depend on how much of the copper we have. It depends on what the composition of that copper is. Therefore, it's an intensive property. When we say something is ductile, or refer to ductility, that means that it can be drawn or pulled into a wire. We can do that without doing a chemical reaction on the substance, and for a given substance, it doesn't depend on how much of it we have. If we have a small amount, we can heat it and pull it into a wire. If we have a large amount, we can heat it and pull it into a wire. Whether something is ductile, or in the next example, malleable, depends only on what the composition of the substance is. Now, reactivity with water is definitely a chemical property. We can't observe it unless we actually see the thing react with water, like sodium metal does. And it's an intensive property. It depends on the composition of the substance. Brittleness, like ductility and malleability, is a physical property. We don't have to do a chemical reaction to observe it. And brittleness is reflective of the composition, the atoms, and how they're bonded. That is, it is an intensive property. And magnetism also is a physical property and an intensive property. Another property of matter is density. And density refers to how tightly packed the particles are. If they're packed very tightly, it has a high density. If they're not packed very tightly, or the particles themselves don't have much mass, then it has a low density. So density is mass divided by volume. You should probably memorize that the density of water is 1 gram per milliliter. And since a milliliter is a cubic centimeter, the density of water is also 1 gram per cubic centimeter. Now the density of water does vary ever so slightly with temperature. In fact, it's the most dense at 4 degrees Celsius. But as a general rule of thumb, water has a density of 1 gram per milliliter or 1 gram per cubic centimeter. The density of a liquid or a solid is nearly constant. It does vary slightly with temperature, no matter what the sample's temperature is. That's why you can go on the internet and you can look up the density of aluminum. You can look up the density of iron and so forth, because those densities, no matter what the temperature, don't vary that much. The density of gases, however, depends very much on temperature. The hotter the gas, if it has space to expand, it will expand, and so warmer gases tend to be less dense. All right, let's try an example. A student needs 15.0 grams of ethanol, which has a density of 0 0.789 grams per milliliter. What volume of ethanol is needed? If we start with the density relation, we're after volume. So let's do a little algebraic manipulation and solve this for volume. I trust you can do that. And now we have the mass 
and we have the density. Using proper significant figures, this rounds to 19.0 milliliters of ethanol.